Hey y'all, welcome back to Road to Wire. Well, as you're shaking the cobwebs off today, uh, I thought I'd drop a line to recap the Kentucky Derby. Uh, obviously, most of the crazy stuff happened outside of the four corners of the race uh, with all the scratches, particularly with Forte scratching on uh, on race day, which kind of sucked. But uh, still, we had a pretty good race, and uh, Mage came out on top. So let's take a look back, mainly just to see if we can get some insight, perhaps, for the prequel that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So here we go, and they're, they're loading up, and you see uh, Mandarin here, all the draw-ins. Look at that 23. That's the biggest, uh, largest post I've ever seen, highest number, anyway. And King Russell who uh, drew one. I'd never seen the 23 saddle cloth before, so now we know what that one looks like. But here we go. And you see at the break, uh, the Tappy Trice, you know, actually didn't uh, didn't break badly. I don't think that was really an excuse. Uh, Mage was a little slow out of the gate as well, but uh, it didn't seem to affect things too terribly much. Dermis Odegaki kind of swerved across. Uh, to, and uh, I don't know, he was a little keyed up before the race. But you see the, uh, the the chalk was all in the back, in the way back. I was a little surprised at that. They must have had some inkling that there was going to be a hot pace. Um, I think verifying set a hot pace mainly because after that bluegrass, a lot of times when horses are due for a bounce, they'll do this. They'll come flying out of the gate because they're a little too sharp. And that's what results in backing up in the bounce. And as we'll see, verifying, you know, he just, uh, it wasn't his day. And keeping those kind of fractions, you're never going to get a mile and a quarter on the front end. Uh, and, it, and it obviously affected King's Barnes and Reincarnate Confidence Game, anybody else who was up near the pace. Uh, you see Rocket Can lingering there, trying to uh, stay off of it a little bit. But, uh, and he didn't do bad. He, I think he finished 10th, but uh, uh, ultimately just wasn't good enough as we suspected. You see Disarm there, making a nice little move. And at that point, I was starting to get excited about Disarm as a possible here. Because he's looking good. He's picking his way through. And you see Dermis Odegaki, uh made a little bit of a move to get into it, too. But um, I think the big, the biggest issue was um, was just Angel of Empire was too far back uh, for uh, for our purposes. Tappan Trice, I really don't think had one excuse whatsoever. You see, look at his head there. He's looking in the stands. Luis Saez is all over him, trying to get focused. And I did have that inkling that you know, in a big race with 150,000 people, if you're fragile mentally that maybe it would, uh, a lot of those bad habits would come back and maybe, I think that had something to do with his disappointing run. But yeah, right here, this this really hurt. For me, that hurt. I, I really like Angel of Empire. And I, I just think uh, Mage Castellano got the jump on him. And uh, really, that was the that was the difference maker. Uh, he ran a great race too, and I don't want to take anything away from Mage. We were, we were thinking he was going to sit on a big one. We just didn't think it would be quite, quite that good. We liked Angel of Empire a little more. Um, as far as the race goes, I think you'd have to say Two Phils was the best horse on the day. To stay up near those hot fractions and still finish second, I think was uh, pretty impressive. And uh, I did, again, he, he exceeded expectations. I thought he'd run a good race, but I uh, didn't expect quite that good. And uh, Angel of Empire, I just think he, he ran his race. I mean, he was a little farther back than I uh, anticipated he might be. But uh, I think uh, Flavor Pratt was just a little slow in, uh, in sending him up. That's my thought on it. it he closed well. He, uh, you know, he ran a good race. But, hey, Mage won it, and uh, we'll see what he does in the Preakness. Some trip notes. Uh, Hitcho really benefited from verifying being in the two hole as he gunned it up and uh, eliminated the uh, the crush that a lot of times the pole uh, position gets. And uh, so uh, Hitcho was able to uh, cut a path and follow him right up and get into good position. And I think Hitcho ran a really good race. He just wasn't good enough. Uh, they was just a cut below before the race. We knew that and it kind of proved out, but I think he did a really nice job finishing fifth. Uh, verifying, I think, was just too sharp for the race. Um, I think he uh, he displayed what normally happens after a horse runs a big race. He was a little sharp. Uh, he went uh, gun into the front, set really fast fractions, and obviously fell back. That happens quite often when a horse is going to bounce. So um, he we didn't get his best today. I think he, the distance might have been an issue. 
uh, regardless of the hot fractions. But uh, anyway, he was a pace factor, and that's what he did. Two fields certainly benefited from uh, verifying getting up to the lead as he was able to track him and get right into a, a good stalking position. Clearly the best horse of the day, no question about it. Running right off of those hot fractions and still able to have enough uh, to nearly take it down. Um, I think he ran an outstanding race, totally exceeded my expectations is what I thought he could do. I was expecting he was going to have a good race, but not that good. So uh, kudos to Larry Ravelli. He ran a great race. I don't know if he's going to be able to duplicate that in the Preakness. Um, I, that's, uh, I think he was keying him for the Derby. So uh, we'll just have to see about that. The confidence game looked okay. He ran, he ran his race. He was able to draft up uh, near the speed, and uh, he just wasn't good enough. That was the bottom line. He was cut below, really had no excuses. Tapitrice didn't either. I mean, he broke fine. I didn't think that was a problem at all. Uh, he Saez seemed to want to get him on the rail to save ground for a little while there. Uh, he didn't look like he was enjoying dirt kicked in his face, but we kind of knew that. Swung him out, and uh, he tried to. He kept urging him to get into stride and get and get focused more than anything else. And you could see going down the stretch, he was still looking in the stands. I mean, the horse just—it's all between the ears with him. And I was afraid of that in a big event. Uh, that a lot of times those old habits come back, and I think that was a case of it. Uh, we won't see him again to the Belmont more than likely, so hopefully they've got some time to school him a little bit, and uh, he'll mature for their purposes. Uh, but disappointing effort, to be sure. Uh, Kings Barnes, you know, he went up near the hot, pit, hot fractions. He was going to get burnt out by that. So maybe he's got better in the tank at some point later in the year. But uh, he was, you know, he just fell back, wasn't good enough. Uh, reincarnate, same thing. Um, he just, uh, we kept waiting for him to, uh, to, to emerge with a good effort, and he just hasn't done it. So I just have to think. Uh, that he's a cut below, and and uh, I uh, maybe he'll be better when he goes out to Del Mar this summer. I don't know, but uh, his his wet East Coast efforts have been really subpar. Uh, Mage, you know, he he broke fine. I wouldn't say he broke great, but those pads in the back of the of his gate definitely helped him. And uh, he he was taken back early, which was a little surprise. I didn't expect him to be that far back. But obviously, Castellano gave him a great ride, and he uh, he got the jump on Angel of Empire, and that's really what it took to win the race. Uh, total credit to him. It was an outstanding effort. Uh, you do have to say, if Forte had stayed in the race, though, uh, he would have been there to run down like he did in the Florida Derby, but that's horse racing, so we'll just have to see. Wouldn't have wanted, wouldn't have wanted to be around Todd Pletcher over the weekend, that's for sure. Um so, yeah, he was uh, he was one of the two best horses of the day. There's no doubt about it. Whether or not he can do it for the Preakness, we'll, we'll see. But uh, he's looking awful good right now. And who knows? Maybe he'll be able to take down the Triple Crown. Um, we had uh, we had Disarm. And Disarm, I thought, ran a nice race. And I'll tell you, at the, on the turn, he looked like he was in prime position to make a move and uh, take this one down. He did run a good race to get up for fourth. I just think he flattened out a little bit. And he might be a little bit of cut below right now. But I think later in the summer, we're going to see some nice efforts out of him. I think this was a really good showing. Uh, Jace's road doesn't even get up near the lead. And uh, he was pretty much a non-factor. And we kind of expected it. So uh, that he did what he was supposed to do. Sun Thunder, um, he had pace to run to. And he didn't run to it. Um, he had been basically doing that for uh, the last couple races, and I, he'd kind of fallen out of favor with me because he just doesn't seem to have that really big kick, and he really didn't have an excuse. He had plenty of pace to run to today or, uh, on Derby Day, and he just uh, he just didn't fire. So we've got to reevaluate him. Um, we had uh, Dermot Sotogaki was, um, um, I thought, just overrated. I mean, I think that's really the bottom line to this. He ran his race. He was a little excited before the race. That's true. But he did calm down once he got into the race. And he did try to make a move at the top of the stretch. Uh, and he just wasn't good enough. That was the bottom line. They took him way far back. I think it eliminated any opportunity he had to stay in the race and control it from my perspective. Uh, but bottom line is I just don't think he was good enough, and I think he demonstrated it. If they keep him for the practice of the Belmont, um, I think we have to downgrade his chances based upon that race. Uh, Rocket Kid, I think, did as well as he could have done, 
Um, I think he, Belmont had him in great shape. I think he did, ran a good race. He just wasn't good enough. And that was the bottom line to, to him. I uh, finished, I think, ninth or 10th. And that's about to be expected. He's just a little cut below. That's all. Um, as far as the also eligibles go, they really didn't factor at all. We knew Kim Russell was due for a bounce. That wasn't a surprise. But Mandarin Hero didn't run a lick. I mean, he didn't run at all, nor did Cyclone Mischief. And they pretty much threw in the towel. Uh, on the backstretch because they just jogged in. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, uh, we, we do have to wonder if perhaps Mandarin Hero bounced uh, after the Santa Anita Derby because it, when a horse doesn't run at all, uh, you just you kind of got the feeling he just didn't feel like it that day. And uh, so if he does run in the Preakness, you know, I, I probably would have to downgrade his chances after that Derby effort, but we'll see as we go along. So that's the 2023 Kentucky Derby. I think it was a pretty good race. I think it was fun. Um, unfortunately, we had all the shenanigans prior to it and uh, all the uh, all the unfortunate instances at Churchill Downs, but.